mate right there. so it's pretty obvious by now that all of this cluster needs to go on this POS don't like this engine I don't like anything about it but this is what we're doing what's better than one POS two POS's this, this is the, they're uh, they're multiplying I still have not had it a strategic plan of how we're going to make these how I'm going to get the transmission off I mean obviously we're going to use the picker uh, but this is, yeah it's going to be fun I might have to put the picker over there pull the transmission back but we have lots of stuff here to move over so I zip tied all these wires up here to get them out of the way to make sure they cleared whenever I took the car apart so now Let's just go ahead and cut all these zip ties and uh, let them all fall where they may. And uh, throw antifreeze all over the place. Yes. Awesome. That's what I wanted to do. That was my plan all along. Great. It's just what I wanted to do. You know, dump antifreeze into the back of the uh, ECU connectors and stuff. That's, that's exactly what I was planning on doing. Uh, that that was my plan all along. So, yeah, it went, that went pretty smoothly. I think uh, first thing in hand, what we should do, um, we'll go ahead and move the move the alternator and the AC compressor. I think I can get to them right now. Or should we move the uh, turbo itself? Oh my, we need. The turbo lines, we need this line, we need this line, we need that line, and I think I'm going to use the gaskets off of the ones on the engine because they look really good and these ones are kind of looking cruddy, so that's what we're going to do. Um, I can move this line over right now, it's right here, and then goes to that. Um, yeah, let's, let's start moving some lines out. Ouch. Why'd you do that?
All right, so now that I got the turbo off, I'm looking at this manifold. This manifold is cracked the same exact place as the one that came off the engine, but the one that came off of that engine is a lot cleaner than this one. So if you can see it right there, there's a small crack. There's like a weld that runs through the inside right there, and it's cracked through it. Uh, the one that's on the car, I don't think it comes through. No, it doesn't come through to the outside but that one's a lot nicer so I'm just gonna take this one off and use the exhaust gasket since it's brand new and uh, I <laughs> I didn't realize I couldn't get this oil line off with the engine mount on it sucks I can't get that bolt out of there as you can see so we're gonna have to wait to put that that's the oil feed yeah that's the oil feed line is what it is can't get to it so um we can put that on later but we're getting down to now where i can see the compressor pretty well to move it over which is lots of stuff to move over man i'm just telling you since i'm down this far is everywhere the loom is is messed up i'm going to run black tape around it to protect these wires because it just it looks like crap and there's lots of it so i mean it's going to be the time to do it but just it's sucky but you know it's it's just it's time starting looking at this and I was like I can think I could take that harness off no this is all one harness so before I go any further I'm gonna uh, get painters tape and I'm gonna start labeling several things on here don't need to label them all but just so I get them in the right spots like this whole branch right here goes to the back of the engine this whole branch right here which I need to retape the center section it goes over to this side, which I don't see how I can even get it mixed up, but I just, it, it might get confusing after everything's pulled off. So I think I am going to label a couple things just so I can keep my bearings straight on this. <laughs> Okay, so my battery died um, I ended up getting the AC compressor on and the turbo and all the heat shields and most of the lines minus the oil feed tube just because we can't get this one off until that motor mounts off and then <laughs> to, to get that compressor off while it's sitting on here you have to the only way i could get on that bottom bolt was to drop the sway bar so i'm going to put the sway bar back on because i wanted it on there so i don't have to go through that again so it's on there now well i'm done for the day uh tomorrow i have the intake manifold right about to the point where i need to take it off i can just set it aside 
Then I can get the alternator on there. That should be pretty easy. I gotta get this motor mount off to get to a, a ground wire that's behind it. So it's like I have to lift this thing off to get to some of the stuff that I need to put on this. Another thing I noticed is this, they have different timing covers. I don't know what's different between the two, but the timing cover off of my car has an access window right here. That's where I think the tensioner is at. So you can probably change the tensioner while it's still in the car. This one doesn't have that. Besides that, I've been looking this thing up and down. And I can't find any differences between the engines, so I don't think there's anything different. Uh, I got all my PCV valves on. That line, surprisingly, got it on. And everything's bolted down with that stuff, too. So everything's looking pretty good. This aftermarket line I got, it like kind of kinked but i'm rolling with it because it's a brand new line uh the one that was on the on this was junk because they ruined it so yeah yeah i'll tell you what all the parts i'm throwing on this is making this engine look crappy this is uh look at the the compressor just it was grimy i wiped some stuff down but it's just yeah it is what it is next day so i did a thing i actually did it twice i'm sitting here thinking i'm like this is going to be a nightmare to put it back in the car and get everything lined up get all the bolt holes lined up all that stuff on jack stands so i went and got a lift cart and we're gonna combine the lift cart with my other cart here i'm gonna set the transmission on this set the engine and cradle on the lift cart and we're going to combine the two and put them back together that way. So that way they're movable. It'll be so much easier. Um, but this is the second lift cart because I went to Harbor Freight this morning. Got one. Now, I didn't want to spend this much money to get one of these. So during the week, I was like, man, I need to get a lift cart. So what I did was all of my old scanners, my reviews, I had so many scanners, you know, companies reaching out. And you, you've seen the videos. I mean, most of you have. Some of you hate my reviews, so you don't watch. But I had so many old scanners, and I have a bunch, a handful of really good ones now that I was like, I need to sell off some of these things. So I listed them online. Don't ask, because they're probably already gone at this point, because they, they I sold so many this week already like quick but i made enough to buy this lift table you know i got another scanner in the mail and honestly this new scanner i got i'm not going to show it to you guys yet but this is this is my favorite one that i have so far i don't know that it has the most features of all the scanners i have but it has a a cool factor to it because it's very compact and has a lot of features so if you do like the scanner reviews, this one's coming up. It uses Autel software, uh, Autofix. This is the light version, and it has bi-directional controls for the light version. So I, I'm just curious what the pro version would have. So Autofix, Autofix, whatever you say. If you like my review, how about you hit me up for the pro? I'd like to, I'd like to try it. I like this one. Also, it's the price point. It's like three hundred, or a little over three hundred dollars. I don't know if they're giving me a discount or whatnot, but we're gonna use this when we get the engine back in this car because you have to do a, a crank sensor relearn and a couple other parameters and stuff. You have to relearn on this thing when you put a new motor in it. So yeah, there's that. All right. So the lift cart is a, a great addition to the family here, and the reason why I had to go get this twice is I got the first one, open up the box, and there. It, the box was soaked underneath, and the cylinder was soaked. I put it together, and it would not go up. It's because it had no fluid left. And I called Harbor Freight, and they said, um, do you, can you see what part of it's leaking? I said, the whole cylinder soaked. They're like, yeah, you're right. Bring it back. And they gave me a discount on this thing. So I got this thing for like $100 less than what they sell for. So it was worth me driving back because I, got, I, I use a 10% discount code. When I got it the first time, but when I went back the, the second time to pick up the next one, they gave me $70 back. What? So I got a thousand pound lift table for like 260 ish bucks, somewhere around there. 
Anyways, continue on this. Um, I've been looking at this. The harness is going to probably stay on the subframe. We're going to be sub taking everything off of it. The harness is going to stay with the subframe. Then we'll lift that subframe up onto the cart, if I can get it to sit on there right. And then we'll set the motor on it over here, or down, or up, or whatever. We'll, we'll get it on there somehow. But continuing on, I don't think I had to take the water pump off to get the uh, compressor out for the air conditioning. Um, I still haven't got this line off over here. Maybe I ought to let's throw a jack underneath here so I can take that motor mount off and. Uh, get that line off because i have the bolt loose but you cannot get it out of there so yeah let's do that real quick and i'll get that line over there so then everything from this side of the motor is taken care of then i also need to get this axle off and i'm having a heck of a time they just don't want to come loose Now this side is done for the time being. Um, I do have a brand new axle for this side, so I was fighting with that one to get it off. I can't get it off. There's a, there's a certain slide hammer tool to pull those off. I do not have it. <laughs> but I do need to get this axle off cleanly. So I'm going to fight with this one for a little bit to see if I can get it off of there because I need that. And I need it to be good. So, it is what it is. So, let's struggle for a little bit and have fun, right? I, I bent that one all up trying. I can't do that with this one. It needs to be saved. So, I do have some slide hammers. They're just not really made for doing that. But, let's, let's see what we can do. adapt and improvise i showed that axle who's boss yeah yeah i can't believe that thing held together that hook's a little stronger than i gave it credit for so next on the list is the intake manifold i've already had it off before but it's just going to get set aside it's not going right back on because there's a bunch of wires that go in behind it there's a bunch of other things it just gets in the way so we're going to be taking the intake manifold off and just setting it aside for now. It's probably going to be one of the last things that goes on before um, it goes back, or before it goes together with this transmission and stuff. But <clears throat> we still have the alternator, the wiring to get, you know, tucked aside because it's not, we're going to leave it here. And uh, some vacuum hoses and stuff, but we'll get to all that.
right, we're getting down to the nitty gritty here. The wiring harness is all off and detached. This ground wire, why GM? Why would you stick that under the motor mount? It like goes through uh, right here and it goes down to a motor to, to the motor down there. You could could have stuck it anywhere. Nope. Put it underneath the motor mount. So I just have to detach this wire. And then there's a oil level sensor in the bottom right there. And then all the wiring is off. And then I think all the wiring's off. Yeah, because that's the rest of the wiring harness. Um We'll have to separate the wiring from the transmission, which there's not a lot there. So that's not going to be much of a problem. Um, the problem's going to be <laughs> everything. <laughs> I didn't put this nut back in this motor mount here because the motor sits down on that. And I just set it in that motor mount over there because the motor's not going anywhere as long as it's sitting on that stud. So we're good there. I do need a... No, I don't. This is the old motor. Screw this thing. Oh, I did want to show you. Um, cylinder 2 is obviously wet compared to the rest of the cylinders. Yeah. So, cylinder 2 is definitely leaking again. Yeah, unfortunate. That block's warped. Definitely. So, besides the, the getting the wiring, get that last plug detached, the only other thing we really have to do is take that drive line off and then... Uh, detach the transmission and you're gonna get to all of the uh, bolts in the flywheel through right there where the starter is so um, get all those bolts out then you got to take out all the bolts around the bell housing and then it should come out uh, hopefully it should come out I hope it does GM was being so thoughtful as to put a plug in the transmission right there where originally a dipstick would go in but since they're doing away with them dipsticks are a thing of the past why yes they think people are incapable of checking their own fluids that's my guess whatever is that the crank switch i don't honestly know guys you tell me is that the crank uh sensor right there like that is the most inconvenient place to put a crank sensor a lot of places put them up on the front of the motor or like on the bottom or somewhere around there no let's put it behind the starter under the intake manifold so easy <laughs> all right so these bolts are an 18 should be able to get in on them like that pretty easy with my gun okay drive shaft then those bolts Tell you what, I'm highly surprised. For as much power as this engine puts out, there are only three bolts that connect the crankshaft, the flywheel, to the uh, torque converter. There's only three. So all the power is going through these three bolts right here. I'm just surprised. I, I didn't expect that. I was thinking like five, six. This thing's making almost 300 horsepower. And it's making just as much torque. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> Subarus, regular, like the old Subarus, they got four in them. And those things are only making like, what, 140 maybe? Not even? Almost forgot a key thing. I had to take the transmission cooler lines off. Hardly any fluid comes out right there. That's all the more you get out of the cooler lines. So I took those off. There's a, there's a mount on the engine which needed to come off because it's not going to be attached to this engine anymore and uh yeah we're looking looking good now just all the bolts around the bell housing and uh transmission comes off look at this nifty sketch 
So I had this piece of foam sitting here. I went ahead and looked at everything to see where all the bolts were. And I'm going to push them down into this foam block after I get them out. That way I know exactly where they go when they go back in. All right, so that's one of the sketchier things I've ever done on this channel. I don't recommend you use a cart like this. <laughs> I don't know what the weight rating is on that cart, but I mean, it's holding the transmission, but <laughs> yeah, it's uh, nice. And now it's leaking. I'm gonna plug that. All right, so there's a uh, vacuum cap plugs work perfect. So we plug that so we don't lose a bunch of fluid on my cart and stuff now. Now we're ready to lift this thing off. It's ready. Um, I know it doesn't really look like it, but it's ready to come off. Um, let me move a couple things. It's sitting on the air jack because there's only two motor mounts on this thing. And if I would have pulled the transmission off without that jack underneath there, uh, the motor probably would have just flipped back and just fell off of the, uh, yeah, the cradle. <laughs> so I'm going to get the engine hoist on this and uh lift it off and then we're gonna set that engine on this uh crate that they gave me with it we're gonna set it on that and then i would like to get that cradle on the lift cart so that i can set this engine on it it sounds like a lot but i want to get these mated together in this video so bear with me Now before I go ahead and slap the motor back in this, look at all this grime. I'm gonna try to wipe out the, I'm gonna wipe this out the best that I can and then uh, continue on. Th this subframe has got gunk and oil all through it. So every time I ran it and it got warm, more oil and stuff would run out of it. So I'm gonna attempt to clean it, but it, I mean, it's not gonna look perfect. Honestly, Taking it outside and power washing it would be the best option, but with the wiring harness here and stuff, I don't want to get wire and all the or water and all the connectors and stuff like that. So, uh, wipe down is going to be the best it's going to get. Okay, now's where it's get, it gets interesting. Um, I put the cat on, and I got to take it back off because there's bolts that go into bell housing that are going to be really hard to get at if I have a cat on there. Also, uh, my <laughs> engine lift doesn't really straddle this thing too well so we're gonna see how far we can get it up here hopefully <laughs> get it lined up i think i have i have this in the last hole so i can't extend it out any further and then um i need to get it on there so stay tuned
gonna put the three flywheel bolts in and then it's assembly time uh i mean this went a lot better than i expected and it, thanks to this lift cart um the only downside to all this is i almost have to leave it sit on this lift cart and i don't know <clears throat> yeah i don't think that it's gonna i gotta leave these together oh here's another thing i want to do before i forget this vacuum line right here hook this up this goes to your vacuum engine mounts so they just 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 a push push in fitting <sighs> but it's looking good now we can drape our well let's see get these coolant lines up out of the way for a second these drape across the back as you can see put these pins in here on each one of these like so and those go over there these ones like this this drapes across here these just push on with a little bit of force and there's another one that pushes on there and then that plugs in back there i labeled just a couple things just in case i got confused that goes um oh that's an o2 sensor that actually sticks on i think the vacuum pump right here that's why i labeled that because so i could remember but i'm pretty sure that's where it, that goes vacuum pump yeah that's where it goes that's why i labeled it so i wouldn't forget then the rest of this stuff is grounds this is obviously going to go here everything should just yeah right there's a plug for that this i don't know goes to something yeah oh i know what this goes to loop it back around it says coolant hose or coolant uh temp sensor back here i it, it looks like i know what i'm doing i really don't <laughs> But before we get too far, definitely need to get these um, flex plate, plate bolts in. So I need to turn. You can reach in there and turn the torque converter. Um, but I need to get the flex plate lined up. Is my light still on? Yes. Um, so let me get a wrench on this. All right. So now we're looking for the holes that you could tell a bolt came out of. That's not one. There's one. So get it right there, and it looks like there's a torque converter bolt hole right there. You can reach in with your finger and turn it back. And you see it right there? We're lined up, and these are going to go back in. Now, they look like they had some sort of Loctite on them, so I'm going to grab a bottle of Loctite and put a little bit on them. All data really dropping the ball on me right now, okay? So I want to torque the flex plate bolts into the torque converter and when i look it up it's only giving me torque values for the v6 and the twin turbo v6 um obviously the twin turbo v6 is a higher torque um and i think there's six bolts in the v6 i'm going to go by the torque value on well actually i'm going to see if i can find it somewhere else on the internet but I might go by the torque value for the LFX motor, which is the regular V6, which is 46 foot-pounds. But let me look it up online and see if I can find something different. All right, so the internet says it's 46. So I'm using my new torque went. Tor torque went? I'm using my new torque wens. Yeah, <laughs> I, I torqued one. Let's go around to the other ones. So just spin it. Can't, I still can't believe there's only three in this. I put all three bolts in already. And then, get in heel like yes. I got a lot of turning to do. Now, I have all three torqued, but I'm going to go through and do a, a second pass just to make sure. And then I can start wiring everything up. But I think that's for another video. Well, folks, that's where we're going to end it today. That was a lot. Um, I put my air jack in there.
because this is going to be sitting here all week long and i'm like i don't know if i trust the hydraulics on these after receiving one that was messed up so i did the next best thing and put my air jack under there and put pressure on it so not all the pressures on the hydraulics i don't want to come home from work and then this engine had tipped over because that cart's going to collapse and yeah but it's progress progress it's looking good so if you like this video smash that like button consider subscribing and we'll see you on the next episode of Unwrecked. You are such a beast. Look at you. You're so big. Stu man. What are you doing? Hmm? You hungry? Yes. Yeah. Are you hungry? What are you doing, Ornery? Huh? You don't have anything to say? He's so talkative normally. What? He's so soft. Miss Antisocial over here. How you doing? She said, this is my couch. Oh, well, that's a big yawn. Can we say bye-bye? No. Fine. Give it back. Hey. Give it back.